Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's December 11, 2013, and let's get straight into the news. Top story headline, Russia warns America, we will respond with nukes. Now, this article is from Paul Joseph Watson, who's been following the developing situation in Russia from the summer games to the Syrian conflicts, and now this. Addressing the threat posed by plans by the, the United States to install a missile defense system in Europe, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister, Dmitry Rogson, today asserted that Russia would respond with nuclear weapons if it was targeted by conventional American missiles. Now, as you recall, earlier this summer, Russia was playing war games targeting who? The United States of America. Now, I'm not claiming that Russia wants offensive action, but at this point, they are definitely claiming that they are willing and able to defend themselves if they feel threatened. Now, Russia may feel threatened by this missile situation. They also may feel threatened by the Syria situation. You remember when our government said that the Assad regime crossed the red line, saying that Assad had used these chemical weapons, even though there is virtually no evidence of that. But there was evidence of the Syrian rebels with the black Al-Qaeda flag in their videos playing with this missile delivery system. Now, I can't visually confirm just by looking at the video that they were playing with chemical weapons, but the rebels definitely do have some type of missile delivery system, and I think they are willing to use it, you know, but don't blame it on Assad when you do. But that's the situation going on in Russia, so definitely be aware of this. If you have an ear to a head of state or somebody with some power, definitely tell them, you know, keep this in mind if you plan to put those missiles over there. And we'll talk about missiles just a little bit farther into our broadcast. Cop who killed 13-year-old boy armed with plastic BB gun back on duty. You may recall this was a young man, I believe he's in California, Sonoma County to be exact. He was walking down the street with his BB gun AK-47 with an orange tip on it. At a glance, you may think it's a real gun, but if you paid attention, you'd see it had an orange tip. Uh, he encounters an officer. It seems that the officer just proactively opened fire on this young man. There was no evidence to point out that he was acting aggressive towards officers, no evidence to suggest that he actually pointed the weapon. The officer opened fire on him. He is a uh, experienced officer, somebody who should know about these guns. And on the Alex Jones radio show today, Alex talked more about this topic. Today is the day you may need to kill someone in order to go home. You cannot turn on the mean gene for yourself. Who will? Taking some kind of action, any kind of action is critical, he wrote. And it, and it goes on with his writings. Ladies and gentlemen, you turn your mean gene on when you know a predator's coming at you. I wanted to turn my mean gene on with those police in Dallas, with those sheriff's deputies. But I knew my real mean gene knew to beat them politically and rouse the public to the threat because I want my life to be spent in something huge. I really want to win, not have some caveman fight with you out in the street. And I wish I could unlock your mind, but I know most of you have already gone too far. I can't. You're so on the power trip of the programming. We've lost you. Now, and that goes for the general public as well. But imagine they have all this instinctive shooting training. Video games were created so that they could get Vietnam troops to kill people instinctively. That's what paper targets popping up. Bad guy, you know, good guy, lady with a baby. Now they have lady with a baby is the bad guy, if you're told. Instinctive shooting, Homeland Security. Kill the woman with the baby in her arms. Kill the five-year-old boy. And that was confirmed by Homeland Security, and no one else picked it up. It was too extreme. No one could even believe that's what they're training for. They are training them to be absolute killers and get off on it and think it's manly. And definitely our thoughts and prayers go out to the family of that young victim. But out of the pot into the fire, we have this. Student told to stop resisting 56 times before fatal shooting, police say. This is what the police say. This is a situation that happened not too long ago right here in the state of Texas. A young college student was out, uh, came in contact with an officer via a traffic stop. Witnesses say that the young man made a sarcastic remark to the officer, after which the officer opened fire. The officer is claiming that he told the man 56 times to, I guess, stop resisting arrest. And the last time I checked, uh, resisting arrest is not a capital offense. So I'm not exactly sure how this officer felt threatened with this arbitrary number. I told him 56, there wasn't going to be a 57th time, so I opened fire on him. I definitely want to hear what this officer has to say about the shooting and how he thinks this is justified, just like the situation that happened uh, not too long ago in Bastrop County. A young man was tased, fell to the floor, busted his head open, and, you know, nobody's really been held accountable for that. I want to know why these officers felt the need to use this type of force, especially deadly force, in this situation. And the police state just keeps on rolling. As if you needed another reason not to shop at Walmart, here's this. 
man handcuffed at Walmart after attempting to price match. Yes, the place that prides himself on low prices will arrest you and kick you out of the store forever for trying to price match. They were saying that this gentleman went to Walmart and was aggressive when he was trying to price match. I guess he came in contact with the managerial staff. They called the police. The police arrived. And long story short, the man is now permanently banned from Walmart. But you're saying, why would you do a story about a guy getting banned from Walmart? That's not big of a deal. He's probably better off. And you're probably right. But the situation with Walmart, as you may recall, that happened earlier this year with an InfoWars employee who was shopping at Walmart. And you may say, hey, he shouldn't have been at Walmart anyway. I'm not disagreeing with you. He probably shouldn't have been there in the first place, but he was. He goes to Walmart, makes a legal purchase of a box fan, not a big screen TV or some other big ticket item. He's approached by an unmarked, ununiformed loss prevention officer who looked like he was wearing a mock-up Metallica t-shirt. You can see him right there. He approaches our employee, says, hey, man, I want to see your receipt. Our employee's like, who are you? He's probably some guy trying to rob me. So the, uh, our employee walks out of the store. The guy follows him out the store, says, hey, man, I'm going to call the cops on you. Our employee says, okay, fine, I'll stand here and talk to the cops because I don't want the cops chasing me down later. The employee stands there, talks to the police officer, talks to the, uh, the loss prevention officer, and the loss prevention officer bans our employee for life. And you're saying, once again, no big deal, right? The kicker about this is when he also got banned, at least our guy, I can't confirm this happened to this uh, recent gentleman at Walmart, but our employee was not only banned from Walmart, he was put on a watch list. This is what the guy, the loss prevention officer, told our guy. He said, you will not be able to come back into Walmart, no big deal, but you'll also not be able to work in security. If you need, ever need a security clearance to work at a job, you will not have it. Also, if you want to work for a Fortune 500 company, you will not be able to do that as well, all because you didn't want to show a receipt for a $20 box fan in the United States of America. So if you need another reason not to shop at Walmart, besides their ties to DHS with the telescreens, besides their employees constantly walking out in uh protesting the low wages there and so forth. You have another reason right now. So if you don't want to be put on a watch list, don't shop at Walmart. Lawmakers push for billions to pay for questionable missile defense system. The Senate and House Armed Services Committees have agreed to jack up spending on a highly questionable missile defense system by 358 million with an M to 9.5 billion with a B. In addition, the lawmakers want a homeland defense radar and are proposing to shower Israel with more money. Later on in the article, it states, if the defense bill is passed, hundreds of millions of dollars will be doled out to the two largest welfare recipients on the planet, Boeing and Raytheon, to build Israel's missile defense system. Now, I'm all about protecting the homeland here domestically, but spending all this much money to potentially, uh, I guess, help Israel is a bit much, especially when you consider that we're here in the U.S. are not at a big risk from countries like Iran and also countries like North Korea as far as long-range missile systems. As Kurt Nemo points out in the article, the experts are saying that these missile systems that are largely, we're concerned about Iran and North Korea, can't hit us because they don't have the proper range required to do that. So basically all this money is going to go to Israel if that's what this money is going to be spent on because these guys can't hit us. You know, of course, we may be able to be hit by other countries, other threats. But Iran and North Korea are not a big threat to us as far as intercontinental ballistic missiles. Obama approval hits new lows. So this man who's out, you know, hanging out with the heads of state of Denmark and making kissy faces and taking selfies and so forth, he hit a new all-time low, which I'm not really surprised. Let's show our viewers that screenshot right there. And you can see the, the latest poll right now. And let's show them, yeah, so you can see the health care, the economy, uh, Syria and Iran. And that's just part of the piece of this Obama block. Because while he was doing that simultaneously, he was out at the Mandela speech. This Mandela speech that cost you and me $500,000 per minute. This is, you know, what we're paying this guy. So he goes out there to deliver his speech when, you know, when he's not flirting with other people. And on a side note, there's a great montage of Michelle slightly moving over to where she's sitting between Obama and the head of Denmark. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely encourage you guys to go check that out. But for this, you know, $500,000 a minute. And I checked with Kurt Nemo, who wrote this article. He said it's $500,000 from us, the U.S. taxpayers, not the South Africans or anybody else. But while we're on this Mandela topic, if you take a look at the image on the screen, you can see the translator, the guy doing the sign language right there. And it turns out this guy really wasn't doing sign language. Now, from what I understand in parts of South Africa, they have a different type of sign language than we do here in the States. But even with that in mind, the top experts are saying even a friend of our producer, Rob Dew, who he was talking to right before this broadcast, he says he watched the 
the Mandela speech, and they said this guy does not know what he's doing. So we don't know if this guy is just a fake, a fraud. We don't know if he is somebody's you know stepbrother who just said, hey man, you want some money? Just go up here and sign your hands for a little bit. Uh, people were saying this guy is pretty much a fraudster, a huckster, and I'm not exactly sure why he was doing what he was doing, but people are very upset about it. So if you're watching this, and if you're watching that and you said, what's this guy doing? You are definitely not alone. And speaking from misleading hand gestures to misleading other things, more misleading official employment statistics. Yeah. The payroll jobs report for November from the Bureau of Labor Statistics says that the U.S. economy created over 200,000 jobs in November. Later on in that same paragraph, it says the, excuse me, the unemployment rate fell from 7.3 to 7.0, which is too much for the job gain. It seems that the numbers in the news of the reports are not conveying correct information. And why would they bother trying to give you the correct information because they expect you to be distracted anyway? And keep in mind these uh, employment numbers are taken from the people currently receiving unemployment benefits. So if you used to receive them or you're not receiving them yet or you just didn't apply for them, that's what these numbers are taking into account, not the total of people, the numbers of people who are just sitting at the house doing nothing. Those people don't really count into this. So you got that grain of assault on top of this where they're saying that they're giving you the wrong numbers to begin with just to kind of ease the situation. And we'll end tonight with this, something that's very disturbing to me. Six-year-old boy accused of sexual harassment for kissing a girl. And not only did he kiss the girl, he kissed the girl on the hand and on the cheek. Now, last time I checked, you know, I'm not any type of expert on these type of subjects, but sexual harassment was an unwanted sexual advance. And from what I understand, the young girl actually enjoyed this. Now, if you want to debate whether, you know, young boys and young girls, six-year-old, should be kissing each other, that's one thing. That's, if you want to talk about that, that's fine. But to label a six-year-old a sexual harasser, I'm not exactly sure how far it's going to go beyond that. If they're going to try to label a kid some sex offender, I wouldn't be surprised if they did in this day and age. But keep in mind, had the boy went into the girl's bathroom, went into the girl's locker room, that would have been Peachy Keen. He could have did that all day long because we've shown you those reports. But how dare he, in a gentlemanly fashion, court a young lady? You can't have that in the United States of America. You can't eat your Pop-Tarts. You can't play with your Nerf guns. You can't pack your own school lunches if you want to go to school. So if you can, if you can afford it, if you can find a way to do it, take your kids out of the public school. That's just my advice for the day. Now, you know we're running this special for PrisonPlanet.tv. You can get a 15-day free trial. But beyond that, you now you can get the five months free. This is our special winter edition. If you go to PrisonPlanet.tv and you check that out, you can see the Alex Jones radio show, the nightly news, the special reports, all there on PrisonPlanet.tv. This is $5.95 for up to 11 people to use your membership. So stay tuned after this break for more special reports and also a special event that Alex went to hosted by Jesse James. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com.
The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. And welcome back. InfoWars is involved in a national NFL boycott. And to tell us more of what this means for you and your family, here's a special report from David Knight. Is the NFL guilty of unsportsmanlike conduct? Americans love to watch football, but there's another game being played behind the scenes. 32 of America's richest men and families are getting massive tax breaks and tax subsidies. Billions of dollars of state and local taxes to build their stadiums, in many cases millions of dollars paid directly to an owner or to a league called incentives to literally bribe the league or the owner to stay. Here are some NFL statistics you don't usually hear. In Cincinnati, taxpayers will provide 94% of the $450 million for the stadium. And Cincinnati taxpayers will also be paying for future projects like ticketless entry systems and holographic replay machines. The Indianapolis Colts get $620 million from taxpayers. Green Bay Packers, $160 million. Kansas City Chiefs, $250 million. Dallas Cowboys, $325 million. Many of the owners are multi-billionaires, but that doesn't stop them from demanding hundreds of millions of dollars from taxpayers to fund their business. Stephen Ross has a $4.8 billion net worth, according to Forbes. He demanded $380 million from Miami taxpayers. And when rebuffed, he threatened to leave and started a political action committee to get his government funds. Arthur Blank, with $1.7 billion net worth, was more successful in Atlanta. He got $200 million in taxes to build a new stadium, even though the old one is only 21 years old. Of course, when you include interest on the bonds, the total bill to taxpayers will be $450 million. It appears that once you become a billionaire sports team owner, you can go on public welfare. We complain about individuals who milk the welfare system. How about billionaires who get hundreds of millions of dollars? Minnesota had a $1.1 billion deficit, but they still took on another $506 million in debt for the Vikings a 50% increase in state debt. The for-profit franchises are getting hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer money for their billionaire owners, and the NFL itself is organized as a nonprofit trade association, saving them about $11 million in taxes each year, while the NFL's net income is about $20 million. But it's not just taxpayers getting fleeced by billionaires and fans getting their pockets picked for expensive tickets and licensed merchandise. The League of Billionaires is the eager partner of the federal government and the social engineering of a police state, partnering with the TSA to commit personal fouls, encroachment, blocking below the waist, and illegal forward passes, all committed against their loyal fans, helpless spectators and passive couch potatoes mesmerized by spectacle while they're being robbed of their money and their rights by 32 of the wealthiest families in America. And now they've banned a wholesome, tasteful ad by Daniel Defense, precisely because it tries to get men out of their passive stupor and take their rightful role as family protector. Stand up to these billionaires who are robbing you of both your money and your rights. Boycott the NFL. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. And I'm hoping that you and your friends and loved ones will join us in this NFL boycott. Now stick around after this break. Alex went to a special event hosted by West Coast Choppers pioneer Jesse James. So don't miss that. It's going to be coming up right after this. The InfoWars crew absolutely loves coffee because we love being awake. And I am somewhat of a connoisseur of coffee. So many times you go to a restaurant or even to a coffee shop and the coffee tastes like garbage. And in all the different coffees I've tried, my favorite is grown in the high mountains, in shade, Arabica, on the border with Guatemala in southern Mexico by the Chiapas farmers. I make sure we've done the research. 
I make sure it's the very best product that we can offer you when I put my name on it. And I believe, and it's my taste, so you may differ, that this is the best coffee in the world from Southern Mexico. Wake Up America Patriot Blend, 100% organic, Arabica shade grown. And then we have the Immune Support 100% organic coffee infused with a special type of mushroom known to boost the immunity. This coffee is seriously so smooth. I normally have to douse my coffee with cream and sugar and cinnamon and all kinds of tasty treats, but this, I drink this black. It is so good. Well, that's why I like it, is that it has a kick, it has really good caffeine in it, it has a good clean wake up that lasts for a long time, doesn't give me a headache, but it's so smooth, it's so delicious. Just try it out for yourself. I'm telling you, this is my favorite coffee. We went through a lot of trouble to bring you this. Just try it, and I think you'll be hooked like we are here at InfoWars. Well, folks, find out for yourself and support the information war today. It's all available at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Jesse and I were sitting down talking up at the house there one day, and he said, JP, you ever go fly fish? And I said, well, I did it a couple days in my life. You know, not a lot, but I did. I, I sure enjoy it. And he told me about this friend of his that he had that was a fly fisherman. And Jesse says, I haven't been fly fishing, but I have a dear friend who's a fly fisherman, and he told me all these challenges he had with the real fly fishing. So Jesse says, well, you know, I'm an engineer. I don't fly fish, but let me check it out. Jesse takes the reel, not being a fly fisherman, re-engineers it, and to date is one of the finest reels in the world. And he's not a fly fisherman, but he's one hell of an engineer. So recently I was up at the house visiting uh, my son-in-law my daughter, and Jesse was showing me here what he was putting together and his ornaments, and showed me what I thought was one of the most advanced things in the world out of Star Wars. He showed me the suppressor he had designed, and knowing a little bit, not a lot about air currents and waves, which he knows a lot about with you know exhaust and things of that nature, I realized that his design was a design that would go along with what you want to do with the suppressor and the actual air waves and what you want to suppress. And a light went off like, wow, why didn't anyone think of that before? The man is an incredible engineer. It's my real pleasure to bring up my son-in-law, Jesse James. Jesse, great engineer here, young man. I'm not a corporate guy. You know, I had a big corporation, but a few of them. But, like, you know, my mission statement in moving in this direction is, you know, it's purely from passion. You know, if I have a good money-making idea and I throw money at it and time and effort, they never seem to pan, pan out. But the one idea that I did have, you know, 27 years ago in my mom's one-car garage in Artesia was to build one bike for myself. And so that repeated itself two years ago when I bought off a Texas gun trader. For 600 bucks, I met some dude in the Target parking lot off of 35, and I bought a, I bought a used Kimber and did a face-to-face -face oh, yeah. transfer, oh, no. and I, I proceeded to take it apart and completely customize it. I made my own slide, my own grips, did my own trigger work, you know, relapped the slide, had it engraved, put it together, and made a better gun, and it, it's like a light bulb went off. They're like, okay, I can make a gun now, like that, you know, and so... I think over the last two years, you know, making more and more stuff and realizing that, wow, this is where I belong to do this. I don't want anybody to have any kind of mis misconceptions because of my name and the stuff that I've done in the motorcycle industry that I'm coming here to put anybody out of business or steal customers away from anybody or anything like that. I'm just adding another option. You know, it's like the saying goes, rising tide lifts all boats. Yeah. You know, yeah. so to make something quality and make it, you know, some people aren't going to be able to afford this stuff. And, you know, but I'm going to make it the best I possibly can and then worry about what it costs. You know, and I think it's like kind of, you know, it's like motorcycle industry. I was down to just crush everyone and dominate, <laughs> you know, and I'm not doing that here. You know, I want to like be here for the rest of my life and pass this company on the generations of my kids and so I'm I'm humble you know there's room for everyone 
and there's there sure is hell room for something that's high quality. The models we're introducing today is you know our 1911, which is our Cisco 1911. It's all stainless steel, best of everything. You know, a high end gun like right out of the box. So uh, the Nomad AR15, which all best parts, all machined out of 7075 aluminum or 7075 aluminum. You know, and and uh, the suppressor. You know, the Aerosonic sound suppressor. So that's a patented design that I came up with about a year ago, and we pushed it through testing, and it's uh, the prototype wasn't functioning quite right. It was leaking a little bit on some of the seals that we're trying, and it was still 10 full decibels quieter than the top one on the market. Wow. Yeah. And that's un, un, uh, no packing and, and dry. So, And then uh, future stuff that we're gonna try to have for SHOT Show on in January is uh, working with FNN on doing a signature edition FNX that we modify and try to get it between 12 and 1500 bucks. So, you know, that's going to be the gun that we'll sell 5,000 a year of. So, it's just working out the logistics of it and trying to make it happen. But you notice that all of our manufacturers, everything 100% made in the USA. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll have a whole custom shop with military, and not only just military and law enforcement applications like SBRs, silencers, you know, stuff that's more, you know, like for SWAT teams and stuff like that. We'll also have a full custom service and shop. So, okay, I want the Cisco 1911, but can I get it with this engraving and the, you know, the grips done like this? So, like, you know. When you buy a gun and you pay four thousand dollars for it, you're not getting the one. Oh yeah, I know this guy on Facebook. He has the same one. <laughs> you know, I want people. You know, there's something special, and I've I've experienced it for the last twenty years at West Coast Choppers. Is when someone pays top dollar for something, you don't want to drive it out in the parking lot and park right next to the one just like it. And I think guns are like that. You know. This stuff is generations, you know. You want you pass a gun down from grandpa, you want it like, oh man, look at, you know, grandpa put each shit on his gun. Why did he do that? <laughs> you know, but <laughs> but but offering a full custom service so you know people can like really you know, and I it's I really think it's a market that doesn't exist in this industry, you know, it's more that the semi bit of customizing that's done is uh, reserved for, you know, guys that high-end skeet guns and stuff like that, you know, and I just, you know, I like stuff, I'm from Long Beach, I like stuff that's like a little bit, you know, like, not flashy, but, you know, it's gonna, people are gonna know it's yours, you know, and I think that personalized service and that custom service is gonna, you know, what separate us the most, you know, take a quality, quality product, then make it each and individual customer, make it belong to them. And that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.